<coughs> okay, in two. Okay, so we've got you nice and close here. As you can see, we've got um, top of the wing section. Got our paint, this is just the green, exactly the same as we did it before. So all we've got in here is about a 50-50 mix. Okay, and for this one we're actually using the uh, guns, uh, the H310. So there we go, sorry, 330 even. So we just check our flow, just down here. Happy with how that is. Now if we brief you nice and close, you can see exactly what we're going to do here. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do is move in nice and close and then obviously looking at our pan, roughly judging how we're going to go, we're going to bring it in. So we're just going to roughly put it in just for the moment and we're going to work our way right the way round. So this one here. Something like that. Now as you can see, it's quite a feathered effect. And what we'll do, we'll tighten all that up slightly afterwards. So we'll do exactly the same on the other side. So as I say, it's quite a rough one to start with. Now what we're going to do is a little circle movement and backfill the actual area. So we're not getting too close to those areas where we've been before. Okay, so we're just doing a little service. You see, I'm not trying to paint the work. I'm just literally filling it in by doing these circle movements. And then when we've got a bit of paint on there, we can then start to actually make it a little bit better. So what we do is we're going to come nice and close in. We're just going to move it around sideways on like this. Okay. Nice and tight. And we can put it in just like that, the line, and then we're going to backfill it. I'm just going to do little circles. Around just like that. Okay, so that's one side done. And we can do the other. So as you can see, I'm actually shooting it this way across so we don't get any overspray down in this area just down here. Okay, so we're just going to come in and tidy this one up as well and sharpen it up so we can see how it's coming out on the rest of the wing. So we move nice and tight. And then... Okay, now I'm shooting this at quite a high air pressure. We're still at 20, 25 PSI here. Normally you would thin it, put it down close, but because it's quite uh, a basic colour, We've got hardly any paint coming out, so we can just bring it in. Same thing, we're just going to backfill. So as I said, we're not trying to cover in one. We're literally just filling it in to about sort of a quarter of an inch away from the rest of the model. Just like so. <clears throat> so there we go. If we bring this up here again, okay, and we're just gonna build up the coat. So now we've got a bit more room. We can do a little bit more paint. Still not massively trying to cover this in one. So we're just gonna build it up slowly. A bit more paint going down now, pulling slowly back on the trigger. Okay, it's looking wet, a little bit wet, perhaps up here. We can just cut to air, so needle all the way forward and just drying it down. And then we can just put some more on. Then I do little circle patterns. Obviously you can do anything you like. Okay, so happy from that. So what we're going to do, we'll turn it around the other direction now. Okay, because if we get any shadowing and things like that, we can just come in. We're going to hang it slightly off the edge. And we should do the front edge. 
that way that gives us a nice crisp line just like that okay and there we go that's our wing painted job done very straightforward it looks a bit sort of patchy there but that's because it's wet okay and that's the basics of getting in there and that gives us quite a nice little tight line for doing your camo work so I'm just going to do the last wing then and we can get on with some bracing okay so that's that all done now so what we've got to do um, is marry up these two halves together now I have found because I've already done the other one to be honest that these little feet that go in the holes are way too thick it makes it stick out a little bit too far so the easiest way is grab yourself a file I've got quite a coarse one move the PE out the way of your finger a little bit and just sand it down it's better for it to be too shallow and it lift up than it is to be too thick and then be pushing out the way. So we just sand them off just a little bit. The other thing also I've done is I haven't glued these bottom ones on as you can probably see. Um, the reason for it is it needs to move and be a little bit fluid when it goes in. So I found having them out of the way is a little bit easier. The other thing as well, these little pegs back here on this side, um, I've thinned them down just a bit just to make it all fit a little bit easier. So when we come along, you basically, it's one of those ones going to be hard to show you on camera, but basically you have it like this, and then we just line up a bottom foot, okay, then a rear one, line them up, see how they go in, and see how they sit. If they sit far too high and they're poking right out, then obviously what you can do is just sand them down a little bit, as we've done in this one uh, and elsewhere. So we just click the rear of the front part in as well to roughly fit in. Okay, then we're sort of holding it a bit loosely. Then what we're gonna do is come along with this photo etch and push it down into the holes in there like that. Once we're in, I'm gonna use generous amounts of actual glue just to get it down in here. Okay, let it all sink in, fill up any gaps and bits and pieces. Okay, then we're just gonna forget about it for a couple of hours to go off. Okay, so we'll let that sit carefully, that does it, okay. And then the same on this one. So we're just trying to get it to fit all in. It should click in. It's quite a tight fit to get all this to line up and everything in there. So it's one of those things, take your time with it, and if you are using glue like I'm using here, just put a drop in and then leave it, okay? Because you don't want to move it around too much, otherwise you end up with all types of problems. But there we go, that's in. Once you leave it for a little bit, <clears throat> out the way, what you end up with is something like this one. Now, as you can see, I've got little tabs on here, just like that. Got a little bit of dust everywhere to be honest but we can look around and it's fixed in okay now this bracing wire is extremely tight it's where it's actually doing what it should be it's actually very tense there again i haven't glued it in it's pushed in there see there is a little bit of room still where it can push in and out of the holes but we've used nice bits of glue in there so what we can do now is airbrush these areas with gray okay just to take care of them and uh, to paint them up the right colour. So we can just touch them in with the airbrush, come along, just airbrush them and take this tape off and that way we've still got white underwings like so, okay, and then the top bit. So we'll let all those bits dry off, get it back onto the actual building bench and we can start getting the rigging in, which is pretty complicated and we'll work our way through. Okay, so now we're back over in the main bay. So actually we've had a bit of a clear around, as you can see, and everything else, nice clean bench, which is always handy. Uh, so what we've got to do now is fill in these little areas under here. You can probably see on the close-up one as well. We've just got to put in these little feet. So what we've done, we've masked off those areas, as you can see. We're just going to come along now with a drop of just a tiny amount. We're not going to need anything hardly for this. So what we're going to do is just put a few drops in the bottom of a colour cup. Tiny drop of the we used I say really this is minimums on this one and we just give this a quick mix together 
Okay. And this hopefully will be one of the last things we've got to paint. So we just check our flow as it comes through. Through comes the grey. Okay, so what we're going to do is just blast in the bottom of these feet. Now just be careful with your overspray where you're going to do it. Normally what I'll do is just put a bit of 40ml just down here in here and it will save a lot of grief in case you go over. But I'm going to try and be clever here and do it without. Air pressure is a little bit high. Let me just turn that down just a touch. There we go, down to about 20 psi. Okay. So what we're going to do is just gently paint this in, just like so. And when we're all painted in, what will happen is, and unmask, I'll finish that one off in a minute, but when that's done, we should end up with something like this one. So if we bring you in here as well, you can probably see, there we go, nice green done as well. See the sparring's all okay, you can see on there, but the beauty is the top is all nice as well. So it's not like we've got a gap on any one, which is quite a nice thing. Now the ends we've got to tidy up, but they're pretty crisp as you can see. And the other thing you can see is we're here, we've got a nice leading edge, top and bottom, as it goes on. And one thing I just want to show you, if you're not up to speed on the swordfish, don't panic if your bottom is looking skew with. It's how it should be. The bottom one is a straight edge. The top wing actually recoils slightly back. It's got a slight angle on it, but the, the base one is the square one. So if you're thinking, hold on, shouldn't both the fronts be the same and not on a diagonal like this? Don't worry about it, it's how it should be. So on the, the back edge as well, you can see it draws in down here. So don't worry about it, it's all okay. The other thing as well, when it's together and nice in position, it's actually quite a firm fit and we haven't done any of the bracing work on it yet. But what we're going to do in a minute, we're going to get all the bracing wires fitted onto this wing and it's quite a long laborious job and I'll talk you through it. Okay, so here we go. This is the fun part. So actually what we've got here is all the rigging that's got to go on. This is one thing why I don't do uh, biplanes and things purely because this sort of terrifies me. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to slowly work through following the instructions and it's a good idea to follow them um, as they sort of say because this is all going to pull in and obviously we do have a certain amount of movement you can see here on this it's quite strong don't get me wrong but it's going to pull a little bit so what we need to do first of all is make sure when you do this uh, that you actually have the right wing for the right picture and keep it orientated towards you now to be honest I've already done one, I have cheated, I've done this one here, and I made a host of mistakes, which I'm gonna talk you through uh, right now. First of all, what I did wrongly, okay, um, I had it in front of me, the instructions, no problem like this at all, and then what would happen was, I would turn the ring around to work on this side, this way, it makes everything reverse, so you get the wrong lengths of wire and everything else, so i.e., rotate it towards you and work from the front, I would say, okay, as part of the instructions otherwise when you start getting the call out for this one says like PE 6 and 7 if you've got the wing the other way around you'll put them on back to front pulling the wing the completely the wrong way so as I say with all PE I like to use um, my scissors it gets a close cut right to the actual edge of the PE don't have to worry about it these are friskus ones I've had these now what seven years still cutting like new so obviously well worth the investment they're about sort of seven to ten pounds but as I say when they last that long I think it's a a fantastic thing so what we're going to do obviously we'll start on the lower bits okay so what we're going to do is run the bottom PE in there so we've got PE1 which is a very long strip up the top so let's see, we'll get to stick this guy out just like this now PE1 goes right over the back so for the moment we know we don't have a problem with this face in the other direction so we can turn it around now the thing is I've got a pair of these which these are um, Tamiya um, photo etch pliers the great thing is they're very flat there's no teeth in here so you don't harm it obviously we've painted these already we sprayed them white when we did the bottom of the aircraft so they're all the right color like this okay so what we're going to do is bend these 90 degrees down so just line up with a little nick Okay, and you should pull straight down. Now, don't wiggle back and forth with them, otherwise what's going to happen is you're actually going to snap the metal part off. So if you do go over, don't wiggle it around too much. 
Okay, now what we're going to do, we're just going to place uh, this one in for the minute. So all we're going to do is just place him to the rear. So we've got one goes in here and one in there. Okay, and it lays across the back just like that. You see on both cameras. Okay, now I don't want to glue it into position purely because if I glue it now, um, I might bung up the holes where the actual part's going to go in there. So what I use, a little bit of tape, okay, just in the middle here, just to hold it in the right position. Okay, and this one needs a little bit of a push to get in there. So that holds it there. So obviously if we came along now and put a blob of PE, it's going to, uh, of, um, PE of super glue, it's going to bung up the whole all type trouble. So by having that, just holds it in position, holds it in place, and we don't have to worry about it. Now the other two we're going to do at the front at the same time. So for this one we've got two and three, or PE two and three, which are quite short ones that just run at the front. So we just snip these out. Now there's another good reason whilst I'm not snipping them out as them all first and then just sticking them in is because some of them aren't that far in different lengths apart and consequently I don't want to be in the position of not knowing which one I've got and having to random check. So same thing with these, so we just bend these down as well. As I say, I don't bend them probably totally to 90 degrees, I tend to do them round about sort of 85 degrees, that way they push in and slide in a lot easier. Okay, so then once they're in there, obviously we can give them a bit more of a nudge. I'm saying, so we got these as well. So we've got a long one and a short one. It's quite easy to spot the difference. Okay, first one just drops in just like that. Same again. Just going to take tiny bits of tamir tape just to hold them in, just for the moment. As I say, we've got lots of other ones which are going to click onto these, and when they do, we don't want to be in the position where they're giving us trouble. Okay, let's do those on. Take, so, just holding them in, just like that. I just find it very, very easy uh, to work with and saves a lot of messing around. Okay, so that's those. Easy bits done. Okay, over here, you probably see I've got a blob, so you can take a clean toothpick or cocktail stick with a nice sharp point, okay, and then that way we can scoop it up and give little dabs how it goes on. Okay, the first one we're going to get in here is the problem ones, because if you don't get them around the right way, it gives you all types of trouble, and this is the trouble I had before. Okay, so what we want, they are two separate lengths, the big cross one that's going to go at the back, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to do it as part of the instructions, so we're going to come along with the first one, and we're going to do PE6, okay? So six is, so as we know, we've got six and seven. So seven is going to go to the outer wing. So we're keeping it all towards me, okay? The big spade end, or the flat end, if you like, like on this one here, if we bring you nice and close on this cam, this end here, the flat one, has a spade versus the other end where it's quite thin, okay? The spade goes into the top flat ones you can probably see up here, there's nice big holes for them. That's where the flat one goes. So as I say, same thing is gonna apply again. So we're gonna bend this one slightly up. As I say, it's only a 45 degree angle because this one's on a diagonal. Okay, and we're gonna bend the bottom one down 45 degrees the other way. Keeping it rotated to me, so I know. So we're gonna start with seven. We know goes to the rear. Might take a little bit of wiggling to get it to go in. Okay, once that's in, okay, and we know it's going to come down to this corner at the back. So we just see already I've made the mistake. This is what I did last time, but because it won't fit, I know. I've made it, whereas before I wasn't quite sure and just carried on and ended up with problems. So seven is a diagonal from the bottom wing strut down here to the top. And when you do it, it automatically fits a lot, lot better. 
And that's because I did what we were talking about. I had it reverse them round the wrong way. So as we look at it, seven is gonna go from the bottom of the rear, the spade to the top. And as you can see, it's bending down quite heavily, as you see. And that's because it needs to be pushed up. And when we pull it all tight, it will all be good at the, the end. So don't worry about it too much. Now this one back here is done now. So what we can do, take a little bit of the super glue. Okay, I'm just gonna put a drop in here so less is best with this we don't want to flood it otherwise you end up with problems like i have before so that's that one in haven't glued the top purely because that way i've got a little bit of movement okay back to how we have it so we know that this is six is going to pull downwards and upwards and this is going to go where we had the other one so it's going to cross over and go the other way now so we just bring this in Just a wiggle this in to get this top one to sit in. Okay, that one's in. Okay, and immediately it falls to roughly. We can get you on the close up cam as well, as you can see back here, up here, uh, it falls exactly to where we sort of want it, and that means we're roughly in the right ballpark. And if you look at the swing underneath, you can see the swagger. By the time we tighten it all up, it should be all good. And because we're gluing on this half of the wing, we're going to glue the top one into position, not going to glue the bottom because we're trying to keep it all on the same. Area. Now you could use a kicker, but if you're using a kicker, be careful because obviously we've got painted area here. We don't want to be in the position where we end up with it flooding everywhere. So we're quite happy that those two are roughly in the right type of ballpark place for this. Okay, so the next ones that we can do is the actual uh, main brace one that comes across the front, which is a uh, number, he's got to remember which one it is now, which is number eight. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to take number eight, which is quite a big one, because it's a twin. So we just snip these out. And so this might be a bit boring to watch, but trust me, when you come to do it, it will save you a bit of time. Because I say, I made a massive mistake, and this is t coming together about ten times quicker than the first one did. The first one took about an hour, but because I know somewhat what I'm doing now, I can sort of pass this information on. Okay, same thing again. I'm gonna come from the top here and glue down. So we're not gonna glue the in one, so we just need to bend this one just up a little bit. 45 degrees, okay, bending it up. And these bottom ones we're just gonna bend down just a fraction. Got a little bit of a peg here on the photo edge. This is where I've cut it with the scissors on the other side. So we'll just nip this off. <clears throat> okay, this one here we're going to go into the glue. It's quite a nice big slip, this top one at the top here. Those top cameras have a hard time tracking in. Okay, so it's going to go in and up here. Okay. Let the glue set on that one. We're not going to go around pulling it around. Okay. And then what we'll do, we're just going to let that get on with it just a little bit. This one's pulled on the back. Okay. So we're just going to let that set for about 10 minutes to totally go off. Okay. And then we're going to come back, pull it square, lock them all in with a little bit of super glue. And then we can just put the finishing bracing wires on. Okay, been a few minutes, so what we're going to try now is pull all this together. So what we're going to do, we're going to first of all, we're going to line up, pull it slightly over. And slide some of these in. So, using a little bit of super glue. Okay, nothing too much. We're just going to put a dab. It's probably a little bit too much in. Cable in. This is where kicker comes in handy. Squirt with a kicker, push it in. Okay, 
and just hold because kicker works well but it's still not as fast as you might think. Okay, that's one in. Okay, tiny bit more. So this time we're going to go over here to this one down here. Bit of blue encouragement, a bit of a push down. Okay, then we're going to try this front one. So we're going to put a blob of CA in between. And we just want to Bring this little guy down, so we just grab him. We just need to bend this little guy just a little bit more like that. Okay, if we can get you in on both of them, you can see what we're doing here. See how we did. Let's run behind. Okay, so that one is drawn into there. Okay, and then obviously we've got this one over here. That's sort of pulling the strength across. And as you can see, the cables are all sort of pulling in the right direction of how they should be, which is obviously always a good sign. As I said, I don't want to around letting go of this quite yet because obviously it might suddenly shoot off. But now we can move around to the rear. Okay, and there we go. That's the rigging all done. As I say, both wings all done. Quite intense. Um, it's a bit fiddly. It's a little bit tricky. At the end of the day, take your time with it. These are the ones at the end didn't seem to fit properly. So then I just made the holes a little bit bigger so it's got room to move and to slide. And then you could judge them in and juggle them all in like that. But basically, all gone together very well, very straightforward. Now, one of the problems we're going to have is obviously weathering around this. But I've got a little idea for that, which we'll get onto in a moment. But that's the wing sections done. Um, the actual main area for the actual aircraft is all done as well. Engine isn't properly fitted on there, it's just stuck on there at the moment. But you've got the top of the wing box I've put on now, that's on there. As I say, got to unmask the actual canopy inside, but it's going to have a, a wash and various things onto this. But one of the last things we've got to do is this area down in here. Now, it's got a black, uh, like an anti-slip uh, surface onto it. And then the outer bit is camo. Because it's in such a tiny little area like this and with the wing fold, I'm actually going to do it by hand. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mask up uh, this little area over here. So I'm going to paint a little bit of masking tape black, put that down and then touch in the areas all around it. That way it gives a nice sort of grip area. All the other way, of course, you can just get in there and paint it sort of flat black by hand uh, and do it like that. But it's a because it's inside and it's a bit of a problem. You could quite easily come in masking tape on the back on these ribs and probably squirt in. But then you've got the problems of it going everywhere. Theoretically, hindsight, lovely thing. Um, would have painted it, masked it completely, then built around it in the early days. But I didn't actually see that one ahead. But I'll just do it next time. That's one to do is actually just to mask these little step areas, get them sorted out. I've also put the photo etch braces on the rear. They're a bit fiddly to say the least because they seem to be too big uh, and they're pushing against this uh, tail section all the time. But there again, it's all in. It nicely fits. It just clips in. As I say, it's an absolutely fantastic kit going to go. We've got no problems with it at all. Got little bits of overspray to take care of when we've got to do the leather edgings on the seat but it's all looking very nice in there and as I say you can just about make out that nice cockpit detail we did but certainly the gunner's seat and the navigators we can do something about those we need to do little bits of touch-ups on those we've also got to get on with the weapons so what we're going to do now we're going to give this a coat of future just to protect it this is the Johnson's clear just going to shoot it neat from the bottle 30 psi all over and that will help us and stop us getting uh, scratch marks on it and things like that